The author's name and the link to original text is in the description. Prime Life Science Consul Care of Ticho took a tired look at the message. So much to do and so little time. Her world had been fighting a global pandemic for months now. Appearing from out of nowhere, the new disease was highly contagious, and while novel was lethal, it still left people incapacitated or heavily relying on their medical infrastructure for a long time. Thus to be able to preserve lives, distanciation and quarantine measures had been taken. However these measures took a toll on the economic activity. Citizens' mental health and global medical infrastructure was being stretched to the limit. Not helping their situation was the blockade by the trading collective. While there was not much evidence that the illness affected non titchens the collective were a skittish bunch. Officially it was to protect their citizens, but Titchens suspected that it was more to preserve their own economic activity. Being a minor player in the collective also did not help. The collective had sent some observers and some token help to deal with the unfolding sanitary emergency, but Ticho was mostly on its own. After months of research, tentative leads and dead ends, Titchen researchers now had some hope in the form of a new treatment that at least lessened the severity of the disease. This treatment was developed in record time, in no small part to the massive computer programs and simulations running to find new molecules and treatments. They were run using a pioneering distributed computing system connecting all their research centers, as well as any volunteer organization with enough computing power, which included ships and stations parked in orbit. To ensure the results' integrity from outside their network, the same job would be dispatched at different nodes, and the results verified against each other on aggregation. As chief coordinator of Ticho's global pandemic response, it was Kiera's responsibility to evaluate and pursue any avenue that could get them closer to a cure. The message had been sent by their prime information consul, Zinc, who oversaw the whole information technology aspect of the operation. He would not have sent it if it was not something important. Their currently available treatment was only a first step, and a new phase of research was required to hopefully find the final cure. This new phase would require even more computing power. Zinc had been reviewing data from the first phase for optimizations that could be applied to the second phase. The information that had intrigued Zinc and now heard was about the computing time of the orbital ship nodes. One of those had consistently returned results in the order of hours instead of days, compared to other nodes in the network, even when they had increased its workload in response to the better times. Zinc had dug a bit deeper about the ship. It was apparently a visiting civilian Terran Alliance ship that got stranded in the system when the collective blockade came into force. The Terrans had only been recently contacted on the other side of the Collective, and as such, they were not a common sight in this region of space. Therefore to see one near Ticho was surprising. The ship's owner had sold off something called a startup, giving him the time and means to pursue other more leisurely goals. He chose to take some time off and tour the recently contacted Collective space. Zinc was proposing to integrate this powerful computing node more closely to their existing facilities for the next phase. Even if they had good orbital communications, the volume of data to be exchanged was quite hefty. So if the ship's computing power could be made available nearer to the center, then that would save precious time. Since it would also be under their purview, they could use a lighter validation process on the results, instead of waiting for comparison with the rest of the network, As chief coordinator, the backing of Kiera would be needed to approve the external interventions. After some finagling with the politics and bureaucracy, Kiera was able to contact the Terran ship. The Terran ship's commander, Bob, was quite eager to help. His ship, being atmosphere capable, was cleared to land near a specially designated area close to their main research and computing center. Interfacing the ship to their planet side grid for optimal use took a few weeks, and Zinc spent much of that time near the ship. 
although he had an army of engineers and technicians available, who could do most of the work, his fascination for non titian technology kept him around. This also allowed his friendship to develop with the affable Bob. It would be some time before Kiera's schedule allowed her to visit the center and catch up in person with Zinc instead of dry status reports. So, Zinc, how's it going? I've seen the results coming out of here, and our research teams are falling over themselves to get computing time with this node. You seem to have done impressive work getting everything together and connected. You are too kind, Kiera. Most of the credit actually goes to Bob. He's quite a tech whiz. Considering that we are working with alien technology, we would still be in the starting block without his insights. In fact, he had cobbled together a program to allow the processing of our data on their computing architecture. Quite impressive if you ask me. Did you know that we could get better throughput by bypassing some Kyber cycles by probabilistic analysis of incoming instruction sets? Pierre sensed the Zinc's excitement for working on this project, and knew he could go on for hours about the nitty-gritty technical details. Her busy schedule left her with limited time however, and computer stuff was not her forte, so she needed to quickly get to the point. I'm sure it's quite something. The results you've obtained speak for themselves. She said with a neutral expression. Is the ship's computer holding up to the increased computing demand? Could we perhaps manage to squeeze a bit more results out of it with some optimization? Yes, quite well, the device is a beast. It's what Bob calls his gaming rig. The ship is just acting like a huge adapter between our networks and his rig. Apparently it's more powerful than the ship's main computer, and it's one of his hobbies to push the limits of the hardware using quite exotic means sometimes. Which reminds me, I'll forward you a list of some cryogenic substances we would like to experiment with. Bob has some interesting ideas about those. Sure, I'll see what can be done. By the way, do these Terrans call their computers gaming rigs? We could add this term to the translation databases for our diplomats. Zinc let out a small laugh. Don't worry about that, it's an informal term they use in some subcultures of theirs. Continuing his explanation. You know how Titchen's kids play using make-believe. Well Terran adults partake in the same kind of play by creating make-believe worlds and simulations using a range of computing devices. Bob likes to play high-end games during the times he transits between solar systems, so he's got a very powerful machine for that. Pierre was baffled. On their world, computers were expensive and practical devices. Seeing their use for play was surprising, to say the least. I see your surprise, but you will be even more surprised to learn that it's an old piece of equipment by the Terran standards. His ship did not come equipped with a dedicated gaming room, so he had to do with some older and more portable pieces. And as a tinkerer, he told me that it suited him just fine. Even if the old computing node was for entertainment, it sure was magnitudes faster than what they had in their research centers. She also got a demo of games on a portable device that Bob had in his pocket. The exchange left Kiera thoughtful of the Terrans. Pursuing such frivolous activities using so much power and ingenuity, it intrigued her. True to their predictions, the Terran computing node accelerated their simulations quite a bit and they estimated to have gained at least half a year than if the node had not been present. After many productive months, once the key simulations were over, the work moved on to more hands-on research, and thus the need for computing power diminished. The ideas that Bob shared also gave them new development avenues for their own computing technology. Once they were sure that it was no longer needed, and their needs were met with their own resources, they disconnected the Terran ship from their network. Requests were still coming in for using the node, but these were mostly unrelated to the pandemic research. 
Kiera felt that their main goal having been achieved, she did not want to stretch Bob's generosity. In gratitude for his help, Bob was allowed to stay planetside till the blockade was lifted and was granted permission to dock at a civilian facility in the city. By that time Bob had become a fast friend of Zink and Kiera and had introduced them to gaming. The Terran targeted controllers were a bit difficult at first for the three-fingered Titchens, so Bob rigged alternative controllers that let them play just as well. Zink was immediately drawn to first-person shooter games, pitting himself against Bob who roundly trounced him at the start, but the Titchen was perseverant. Kiara felt guilty taking interest in such recreational activities when she was dealing with serious responsibilities. But she planned to later check out certain social simulation games that Bob had gifted her. While they dragged their feet. When the Trader Collective was satisfied that there was an effective cure and the pandemic was effectively over, they lifted the blockade. By that time, Zinc had become quite proficient in some games. Word got around of the marvels held by Bob and they were soon joined in by other Titchens in their social circles. It was a sad farewell for everyone when Bob resumed his journey, but they still had memories of the time spent together for a common goal as well as their virtual adventures. After Bob's tour of a few remaining collective worlds that he wanted to see, Zink hitched a ride with him to Terran space. After a few years, he came back to Ticho to start his own company. At first to commercialize Terran gaming gear and games, but soon to also develop their own Tichin video games. Kiera snagged an ambassadorship to Terran space, curious to get to know more about Terrans, and developed a Tichin and Terran friendship over the years. As for Bob, he still takes time off to travel the stars in his newer and bigger ship, the PC Master Race 2.0, with a proper VR gaming room. But he still keeps around what he calls, retro gear, 